what is going on everybody? I've got a bit of an unexpected unboxing for you today. I did not think my Samsung Galaxy S20 FE from T-Mobile was going to arrive so soon. I just got a shipping notification this morning and here it is. You know, I ordered um, the white version from Samsung a couple days before I ordered this T-Mobile one and yet the Samsung one isn't here, but uh, the T-Mobile one is. So, hey, let's get started. It's the Samsung Galaxy S20 FE in navy blue cloud navy i guess is the official color name and this is the t-mobile version so really glad to have this here today to unbox for you guys and uh, i hope everybody's staying safe it is of course probably the best time of the year for tech google has their event today and let's do this so the samsung galaxy s20 fan edition 5g Snapdragon 865 processor, a flat display, which a lot of people are gonna be happy about. And here we are, as soon as I open the box, I am greeted with the phone. There is a thin sheet of paper here, for some reason that was uh, on the inside of the top of the box. So I'll set that off to the side. And in there, you've got your customary books and pamphlets with your SIM ejection tool which was uh which is usually the case oops and these um these samsung galaxy unboxings here we go so got info technical info on the phone terms and conditions you have a little pamphlet that um, is summarizing some of the features in the phone the camera stuff the 5g connectivity and some quick instructions. All right, so here we are. Let us get this phone out of the box. I've been using the S, or excuse me, the Note 20 Ultra. Let's file this off to the side for now. Uh, so this phone is, is going to immediately, I think, feel a little bit, just a little bit, uh, I don't know, more usable one-handed compared to the size of that Note 20 Ultra. And you've got your SIM card here. And I think this is, uh, T-Mobile's new, I forgot what they're calling it, but it's that standalone 5G SIM card that they wanted people to go to. So I'll make use of this at some point. And what else do we have here? We've got another odd folded piece of paper here. Never seen that. Um, all right. And you've got your wall charger, of course. This is in white, adaptive, fast charging. This looks a lot like... Um, I don't know, was it the S10's fast charger? It was like a matte white. I could be wrong on that, correct me if I'm wrong. At least for, for some of the color options. I think if you got the black S10, you got a black charger. And you've got your USB-A to USB-C charging cable. So it's not the USB-C to USB-C that we see on the regular S20 and on the Note 20 lineup. All right, phone time. Let me put this on here so I can rest this here. And we've got, it looks like a pre-installed screen protector, which I shall get rid of. And do we have another one here? Cause I saw in one unboxing video, they said there was yet another screen protector pre-installed. I don't think that's correct. It might've been on their uh, review model. Anyway, back of the phone. It looks a little shimmery just because of the plastic. Of course, this is Actually, a matte finish. All right, and here we are. The Samsung Galaxy S20 Fan Edition 5G. And we've got that nice cloud navy finish on the back. Kind of just trying to show it to you here in different angles, the color. And uh, there's not much to it, really. It doesn't really reflect, I don't think, or refract other colors. It's just a matte navy. And this is Samsung's elastic finish, of course. Uh, we'll see how it holds up to some of the, the nicer uh, polycarbonate finishes of past smartphones, like what was on the Nokia the Lumia line for so many years. Uh, let's see here, the phone is made in Vietnam. I don't know if that's gonna be the case for all of them. Here you see the triple camera array. You've got your telephoto, your wide angle, your main lens. And this will be, I think, very similar to the camera setup 
almost the exact same camera setup, I think with the wide angle of the main camera as the regular S20. I believe the telephoto is different, however. Side of the phone here, you have your volume rocker and your power button. And it looks like I got some more plastic to peel off here. So let me do that. So you get a, as good a look at the phone as possible, including the metal frame. Let's see, give me a second here. All right, that was very, uh, that was a very small piece of plastic. We've got more here. Unpeel this for you. All right, this one's going to go down a little bit further. And at the top, we've got more plastic to peel off. I'm always uh, a little bit paranoid about these. I don't want, I do not want to uh, scratch the metal frame. I know my nails probably can't do that. I kept slightly longer nails than I like because I knew I'd be doing these unboxings and having to peel the plastic off. And we're still not done with peeling plastic, guys. Here we go. So just showing you what you got to deal with, with some of the retail versions of these phones, at least this T-Mobile version. All right. Is that all? I was showing you the power button, the volume rocker on this flat display here on the top. Of course, you've got your SIM tray and you've got a microphone clean and flush along the left side of the phone. On the bottom, you've got more plastic and you've got your speaker. Of course, it's a stereo speaker setup this time, unlike with the S10e, you've got your USB-C port and a microphone down there. So the box did not come with any headphones. That seems to be a theme this year with the Samsung devices. All right, there's one side of the plastic. The plastic does not connect like it often does on the top of the bottom, where you can just peel it off in one fell swoop, unfortunately. So more plastic peeling. I think that's all. If it's not, then I lied. So here you are. One more time. The sides, the top, the bottom. All right. Very nice. And here you see the display. Punch hole cutout for the camera with a bit of a metallic kind of ring around it or iridescent. I'm not sure which, but let me fire this up. Get a SIM card in here, and I'll be right back. All right, we're back here. Let us go through this setup together. Of course, the S10 Lite came out uh, almost a full year after the S10. The S20 coming out just about six months. Excuse me, the S20 FE coming out about, coming out about six months after the S20. The original one was released. Let's get started here. And taking us through our terms and conditions. I'll connect to a Wi-Fi and be right back. Checking for updates and installing updates. Apparently this phone feels really, really good in the hands, by the way. Again, I'm coming from the uh, Note 20 Ultra. This feels heavier than I would have expected, especially considering it's got that glastic back. It's not super light. It's not, it's not super heavy, obviously, but um, I don't know. I guess holding the S20 with the glass back, uh, I would think that this would be um, no heavier than that, even though it's a slightly bigger phone. I will do a size comparison for you here in a bit. Uh, in fact, while we're waiting, we can do that. So this is the regular S20. Came out back in March or late February in the cloud gray. And you can see how these compare in terms of width. It is a little bit wider, this S20 FE. And it is going to be a little bit taller as well. Well, a good deal taller. It's, it's going to feel bigger in the hand, no doubt. It's going to feel a lot like the S20 Plus. Now, technically, I've heard a bunch of reviewers uh, saying that this phone is smaller, quote unquote, than the S20 Plus, just because the display is smaller, 6.5 inches as opposed to 6.7 inches on the S20 Plus. But if you look up the actual dimensions of the phone, 
they're very similar, but, but this is bigger. This is a larger phone. This has got a larger footprint than the S20 Plus. So keep that in mind. Just because the display is smaller doesn't mean the phone is smaller, of course. So now as far as the S20 lineup is concerned, certainly the S20 Plus is what this most closely compares to in terms of size, but it is slightly larger in case you wanted to know that. All right, I chose not to copy my stuff over from my S20 just so I can show you what this phone is about right out of the box. Let me sign into my Google account. I'll be right back. And as we continue through the setup process, it's asking me about the Google Assistant, Google Services. All right, let's see. I will opt into what I want to opt into. And nothing more than that. So I'm setting up my fingerprints here. And of course, this is an optical fingerprint sensor here, not the ultrasonic one that we saw on the rest of the S20 line. All right, so getting set with the fingerprint sensor. It tells you to press your finger on the sensor, then lift it off when you feel a vibration. So let's do it. Felt this slight vibration here. Of course, this phone, some other differences in specs from the S20 line comes with a quad HD display, excuse me, this comes with a full HD display instead of the quad HD. But to me, that doesn't really matter much. A, because I can't tell too much of a difference. The displays are fantastic regardless. Also, if you're using that super smooth 120 hertz display, which if this phone didn't have, I wouldn't get it. Um, you've got to be on full HD anyway, regardless of which S20 you have. So it's a wash in my opinion. Okay, let's uh, add another one. Trying to use different parts of my thumb with almost every single press here, just so it gets a better idea. And there we go. So I'm gonna add another one here. As always, I advise using both your left and your right thumbs having two instances of each so that um, it can probably read your print more quickly, no matter which hand you're holding the phone with. It's asking me if I want to install these optional apps from T-Mobile. I'm gonna go with no, adding finishing touches. And it says we are all done. Tap finish here. And we are in. Nice pretty wallpaper here. It looks like uh, I think the same one from the S20 line. And I'll transfer all my stuff over in a little bit. But in the meantime, let's take a quick tour uh, through the settings. And here we are. It's uh, I think it's One UI 2.5 out of the box and it should update to One UI 3.0 really soon. Let's make sure of that here. And here we are, Android 10, One UI 2.5. So let's go straight into display here since that's one of the differences in the phone. First of all, I'm gonna go to dark because I much prefer dark mode. And motion smoothness is set to high out of the box. And again, quite frankly, personally now, it's, it's a deal breaker for me if a phone only has 60 Hertz. Um, you know, even 90 Hertz is uh, acceptable, uh, but it's just, there's such a gigantic difference in the experience between a high refresh rate and a 60 Hertz display. Just the, you know, the, the phone might not be faster overall, but it feels so much faster and certainly feels a lot smoother, with that high refresh rate. And once again, there's not gonna be any option here to change the screen resolution out of the box. It just comes with full, uh, HD. The rest of the S20 lineup has Quad HD, but again, no matter what, if you're going to be using that high refresh rate, that 120 hertz, you need to set it at full HD. So it really doesn't make a difference. Um, let's go back into the settings, see what else we got here. I suspect that the wallpapers are the same as in the rest of the S20 lineup. It looks like they are. I'm not sure if these two on the bottom are new or not, but they look really nice for the fall. Um, they kind of they kind of fit for the season. You can of course use all the apps that Samsung makes to customize your phone, good luck, etc. You can set your own theme if you would like. You've got the same biometrics and security options that you have on the other S20s. I added three fingerprints uh, so far myself. I'll add one more set. 
uh, you can do face unlock and of course you can set a password, a pin, etc. I'm gonna go back into display and go to navigation bar and I'm gonna turn to swipe gestures. And I like to keep gesture hints off because that little, uh, that little white hint on the bottom, as you see here on many apps, it creates either a white bar or a gray bar or a black bar along it and does not take full advantage sometimes of the screen's real estate. And plus, is that really necessary once you get used to it? So it looks a lot cooler to me for there to be no hint, no buttons, nothing. But it works, of course, the exact same way. So, so the navigation looks about as smooth as you would expect, just as buttery smooth so far as it is on the S20. And you'd expect nothing less, same processor, same uh, refresh rate here when you set it to the high refresh rate 120 Hertz so guys this looks good this looks really really nice I'm looking forward to using this phone I'm looking forward to getting the white version in as well and uh, if you guys want comment down below ask me any questions you've got and let me know if you want me to do a, an unboxing of the white one as well or comparing the colors or anything so this is it the Samsung Galaxy S20 FE uh, unboxing this is in the cloud navy again really really nice let's take another quick look around the hardware you've got a nice uh, camera housing set up here that is very similar to the note 20 line again this matte textured finish samsung branding on the bottom nothing on the left side of the phone on the top once again you've got your sim tray and your noise canceling mic Volume rocker and power on the sides, on the bottom, USB-C, speaker, and microphone. I already compared it with the S20 for you. Here's a size comparison with the Note 20 Ultra. So first of all, let's take a look at the difference in the width. And you see the difference is quite noticeable. And uh, actually, if I said it like this, it's probably, probably better. There you see it. And in the height, you can see the difference here. Let me get these exactly right. You see there is obviously a difference in the height as well. Also, the rounded corners in general will make this a little bit easier to handle, to hold with one hand. So that's it, everybody. Thank you guys for watching. Again, I got uh, more coverage coming up of this phone, more unboxings. So subscribe if you want to catch that. Stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next one.